Well, good evening. Welcome to the March edition of Sky Views, brought to you by the New Jersey State Museum Planetarium. I'm Bill Murray, Planetarium Technician at the Planetarium. Let's take a look at some of the interesting sites visible in our March skies this year. Well, we start off the month with a bang. Uh, we're looking towards the west, very low in the west, on the evening of March 1st. It's about 7.20 p.m., the end of astronomical twilight. And what we're seeing is probably the best planetary conjunction of the entire year. On that evening, the bright planets Jupiter and Venus will be only about a half a degree apart. That's about one moon diameter. Uh, they're the two brightest objects in the sky with the exception of the moon uh, and the sun, of course. Uh, and they're very close together this evening. Venus is the brighter of the two at a magnitude negative four. And Jupiter is still very bright at magnitude negative two. And uh, if you can get a chance to see them on the evening of the first and then follow them for a few days later, you'll see that Venus is going to be rising in our evening skies, getting higher and higher. It's just beginning its apparition for the year, while Jupiter heads in the opposite direction, lower and lower and down into the sunset, and it will reappear in about a month and a half in the morning skies as a morning star. We're now looking south uh, again on the evening of March 1st at the end of astronomical twilight. And even though March is uh, the time when spring begins, we'll have more to say about that in a few minutes, uh, it's also probably the best time of year to see the winter constellations. As we can see looking south, we see all the constellations of winter that we've been talking about for the last few months here in Sky Views the bright constellation of Orion the Hunter, and below him, the constellation of Canis Major, the large dog, with its bright star Sirius, the brightest star that we can see from here on Earth in the nighttime sky, and above him, the constellations of Gemini and Taurus, uh, all the constellations of winter. Uh, just as the sky begins to darken on March evenings, they're all very well located high in the south. As we look towards the east, as the sun begins to fade from the sky on the evenings in early March, we can see some of the constellations of springtime, some of the major constellations of springtime, beginning to rise in our eastern skies. The first and probably the most famous of those constellations is located in the northeast, and that is the constellation of Ursa Major, the Great Bear most famous because it contains probably the most famous asterism in the night sky, the asterism known as the Big Dipper. These four stars here form the cup of the Dipper, and these three here form the handle. Uh, in the constellation of Ursa Major, they make up the bear's back and tail. And uh, in addition to that, many people know that these two stars here at the front of the cup, W and Merrick, if you draw a line between them, they will point you to probably the most famous star in the sky, even if it is not the brightest star, and that is the North Star, Polaris, which is located in the small and kind of dim constellation of Ursa Minor, the Little Bear. In addition to Ursa Major, uh, another bright constellation of the springtime is the constellation of Leo, the Lion, which is a constellation of the Zodiac, it's easy to recognize Leo because the head and front paws of Leo uh, are made up of a group of stars that kind of look like a backwards question mark. Um, the bottom of that question mark is the bright star Regulus, uh, first magnitude star in the constellation of Leo. And then a little bit to the south and east of Leo is the very long constellation of Hydra, the sea serpent. These three constellations form a group of constellations known as, by the uh, New Jersey astronomer Fred Schaff as the four carnivorous beasts. Ursa Major, Leo, and Hydra form three of those four. And an interesting trait is that they all seem to be facing and walking in the same direction. All of these constellations are facing towards the west with their feet, if they have feet, towards the south. So Ursa Major, Leo, Hydra of course doesn't have any feet, but it is facing towards the west. 
and the fourth of those constellations is the winter constellation Canis Major, the great dog. So the four carnivorous beasts are Ursa Major, Leo, Hydra, and Canis, Canis Major. It's interesting to note that virtually all the animals in this part of the sky share the same orientation. Uh, all of the four bright constellations that we just talked about do, but many of the dimmer constellations do as well, including Monoceros, the unicorn, Canis Minor, the little dog, and Leo Minor, the little lion. We're now looking towards the southwest uh, late on the evening of March 20th, just a little bit before midnight. And we can see some of the spring constellations that we just talked about, including the full length of the constellation Hydra. Of all of the 88 constellations in the night sky, Hydra is the largest and the longest. Uh, it extends more than 100 degrees in length. Uh, more than a quarter of the way around the sky. The head of Hydra starts very near to Procyon, um, the star in the constellation of Canis Minor, uh, the little dog, which is a winter constellation, but ex the tail extends very close to the constellation of Libra, a late spring, early summer constellation. So Hydra spans the entire length of the spring sky. In legend, uh, all three of these constellations shown here, Hydra, Cancer, and Leo, were associated with another spring constellation, the constellation of Hercules, the strong man. And they represent some of the uh, famous tasks that Hercules had to uh, accomplish. Uh, one of those tasks was that the town of Lerna in Greece um, was being uh, pestered by a monster that lived in a swamp, and that was the Hydra. It would uh, occasionally eat cattle and terrorize the civilians, and Hercules was uh, asked to uh, deal with this problem. And uh, he did have some difficulty doing it, however, um, because um, the Hydra had a very interesting property that when you cut off one of its heads, uh, two others would grow back in its place. So Hercules battled the monster, and uh, as he was battling it, he would cut off one head and uh, two more would grow back. Uh, so he was having some difficulty. He called on his friend and charioteer, Iolus, to help him. And as he managed to cut off one head of the Hydra, Iolus would burn the stump with a torch so that it wouldn't grow back. And eventually only one head was left. Uh, that head was immortal. Uh, and so when Hercules cut it off, he buried it under a large rock and was finally able to uh, take care of the menace at the Hydra. While he was doing that, however, he had another problem to deal with because as he was fighting the Hydra, he was attacked by a giant crab, which also crawled out of the swamp. The crab was sent by Hera, who was the, uh, the wife of Zeus, the king of the Greek gods, she had no love for Hercules because Hercules was an illegitimate son of her husband, Zeus. Uh, and so she sent the crab to irritate him while he was uh, trying to kill the Hydra. And uh, Hercules stomped the crab into the dirt. And in order to memorialize it, uh, Hera put it into the sky as a constellation. The constellation of Leo was also associated with Hercules, another one of his tasks. Um, the Leo, the lion, was represented a beast um, that was again terrorizing a part of Greece. And it was said that the skin of the lion was so tough that no weapon could pierce it. So Hercules wrestled the lion and managed to strangle it, then used one of its own claws to skin it and use the skin as a suit of armor for himself. March 20th is also the date of the vernal or spring equinox here in the northern hemisphere. Uh, as the Earth travels around in its orbit around the sun, uh, for the last three months, um, the Earth has been tilted away, at least the northern hemisphere has been tilted away from the sun. Uh, nights have been longer, days have been shorter. But on the uh, 20th of March, um, the sun apparent motion through the sky brings it to the equator. So uh, on that date, 
the sun appears to move from the southern hemisphere to the northern hemisphere in the night sky. Um, the sun rises exactly in the east and sets exactly in the west on that day, and the days and nights are about 12 hours long each. After this date, uh, in the northern hemisphere, uh, the days will become longer than nights, and hopefully warm and clear weather will persist, so you can get out and uh, try to view some of these interesting sights in our nighttime skies. Well, that's a brief look at some of the sights visible in our March skies this year. Uh, from all of us here at uh, the New Jersey State Museum Planetarium, until next month, clear skies.